Are you struggling with creating that basic math lesson plan that used to seem so easy when you had to teach the lesson when your students were sitting in front of you at school? Are you struggling with what to actually put in your lesson for your live or pre-recorded lessons for your remote or virtual learning? Well, today in this video, I'm going to walk you through the five components for a virtual math lesson. Welcome to another 10 minutes with the Ignited Teacher. My name is Michelle, AKA the Ignited Teacher. And on this channel, I help math teachers of struggling learners to effectively manage their classrooms and to increase student achievement. A lot of classroom teachers have given two thumbs down to online learning. And I probably could agree with them had I not began to shift a lot of my math instruction to online platforms such as Google Classroom, Edpuzzle, Nearpod, and Flipgrid. But in doing this, I realized that there were five components that every teacher needs to deliver high quality math instruction online. So the first component of teaching or planning for teaching an online lesson is to teach the math content. Now, this requires for you to find an online platform that you're going to use to present your content. So for me, a lot of my videos are done with explain everything. If you follow my blog, you probably have already read the explain everything blog post and how it can help you to deliver pre-recorded lessons for your students. The other part is Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle is a free online tool that actually helps your students to pay more attention to the content that you're delivering by adding questions, quizzes, and different other elements to a video that you created. And here's the great thing. You can also use videos that are created by other teachers. So the second component of a virtual math lesson is to give your students the opportunity to actually practice the math content. And you're probably saying, well, hmm, how do I practice, give them the opportunity to practice math content when I'm not even there? Well, there are other ways to allow for your students to practice their new learning. I use MobyMax, which I normally will take one of their lessons, create a pre-recorded lesson, and then have assigned the lesson in MobyMax for the students to complete based on the instruction that I have given in the pre-recorded lesson. The next component is engagement, but engagement can be lumped together with the fourth component, which is math discussions. Now for me, engaging your students can be done through math discussions. And although the students are not in front of you physically to have a discussion, we still have to provide an environment and an opportunity where the students can talk about and discuss strategies, new learnings, misconceptions about the instruction that you have provided for them. And this doesn't have to just be new content. This can be review content as well, because I am a math intervention teacher and my students tend to reg regress very quickly. So I always do review, review, review with them, even if it's something that is real quick for them. Now, engagement and math discussions can be done through Flipgrid. You all know that I am a huge fan of Flipgrid. And there are so many 
things that you can do in Flipgrid to give students the opportunity to discuss strategies, new content, their thinking, even though they're not there physically. For example, one of the new, the whiteboard functions that um, Flipgrid has added has helped my ninth graders so much because they are really concerned about how they look on camera to their peers. So my goal is to just get the kids to talk about their thinking and how they solve problems or equations or whatever it may be on Flipgrid so that we can have discussions about it without them feeling insecure about how they look. And I love that whiteboard function. The other part is they've added where if you have a student response that's really, really great, you can spark that response and use it as the stimuli for your next classroom discussion. And then this gives you the opportunity to teach your students how to give appropriate feedback and to take some of what their classmates are doing to make it their own. And that is a powerful thing. The last but most important part of a virtual math lesson is mastery of content. So Google has done a plethora of, of grades as well, just like Flipgrid. And they've added a quiz function in Google Forms, which I tested out last week with my students. And it is a great tool to assess your students learning. It could be formative or a summative assessment for the students. Now, here's a note. I've been in some math Facebook groups and they are saying that the kids are learning how to share answers with the Google form. So you have to put some security in place. Now kids are savvy with technology and they're always looking for ways to beat the system. I learned that in high school, but Google forms and their quiz function is an excellent way to assess your students mastery of the content. So I hope that you have found this video helpful. And if you have any other topics that you would like for me to discuss on this channel, definitely drop them below in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload other videos.